Mechanical organs and things might have stayed just that if it hadn't been for another craze sweeping Europe, a mania for Chinese fashions, particularly in dress, when at the beginning of the 18th century, very complicated patterns became all the rage, especially in France and particularly in silk. By the beginning of the 18th century, the demand for this kind of pattern was giving the silk weavers of Lyon a real headache because silk weaving isn't just the simple over and under business of ordinary weaving, it's much more complicated. I mean, take a look at this. This already complicated pattern, if you follow it across, there you see suddenly for about five threads, that particular orange. So it comes in, say, at thread 530 and it disappears again at thread 535. Now, if you get that one thread wrong, you've blown it. Let me show you on this little model loom here how they cracked that problem. Every thread runs through a tiny ring on a cord, so that if you want to lift the thread, you pull the cord up, the thread lifts, and in this case, the crossing thread would go underneath and in the final pattern not be seen. Now, if you tie together all the cords for all the threads that you want to lift into one bunch, then one pull will lift them all, like this. Now, in a complicated pattern, there would be a lot of those cords to pull, and the children whose job it was to do it would get tired and pull the wrong cords and maybe ruin a week's work. So in 1725, a Lyonnaise weaver called Basile Bouchon solved the problem because his father was an organ builder. Because his father used these things for his automated organs. Remember the organs? He used the same cylinder with pegs in it to make music as they'd used in Belgium to work their bell ring in Carillon. And they'd originally got that idea from the cams set onto the shaft of the paper mill. Bouchon saw that the piece of paper that you give to the carpenter to tell him where to put these pegs on the cylinder was in fact a kind of control mechanism. So he put it on a loom. Look, each control cord comes over and down here. And whether or not it's moved depends on this horizontal needle here. Okay, now for the control mechanism part. What Basile Bouchon did was put a roll of perforated paper up against the needles, the cross needles, and where there was a hole, the needles stayed put because they came through the holes. And where there was not a hole, as in the case of these four needles here, the paper pushed the cross needles so that all four needles and all their threads operated simultaneously like this. And to change the pattern, you simply move the paper along one row of holes. But the paper tore and the weavers placed it in the wrong position. So around 1740, another weaver from Lyon called Falcon came up with this idea. He put each pattern on a separate card. Now, the card was more durable, and you couldn't really mistake how you should position it. Around 1750, one of the greatest machine makers of all time, a man called Vaucanson, who was also the inspector for silk factories, automated the entire process. He put the perforated roll around a cylinder and mounted the cylinder on a chassis which went backwards and forwards on water power, like this. And as it did so, it clicked forward one row of holes automatically each time. Now, that was limited to how much paper you could put around the cylinder, and it put men out of work. So for nearly 50 years, this loom moldered unnoticed here in the Paris Museum of Arts and Crafts, until just after 1800, Another weaver who happened to be here at the time was asked to put it together. And in doing so, he made a few changes. He put Vaucanson's idea together with Falcon's cards and came up with this. It's automated, and it has the advantage that if you want to increase the pattern, you simply add more cards. Now, for that minor amendment, he got all the glory. Because to this day, the entire concept is named after this man. This is a Jacquard loom. And boy, what a success that was. Well, not in France, because the revolutionaries decided they didn't like fancy aristocratic patterns. But in England, where the loom ended up making things like paisley shawls very popular. And where these cards got picked up for a very different reason. They got used to control automatic riveting machines that by the mid-19th century helped to build the great new iron ships that were to make the crossing of the Atlantic safer and faster.